All right, welcome back to Lightroom Classics. So today we're going to go over how to import. Now the point of this is to take your images off your SD or compact flash card and move them to a hard drive. This serves two purposes. First, it's much faster to work off a hard drive than it is an SD card. And second, an SD card or compact flash card isn't the safest place to be. You're better off being on an external or an internal hard drive and then backing that up if one of your hard drive crashes, you always have that back up. What we're gonna do is open up the import module and that's located right down here in the bottom left. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Now, if you have Lightroom open and you stick your card in, this will automatically launch. And what this is showing here is the images that I have on the card and they were the exact same images that I had before. If you do not see any images come up here, it is because right here, your card has not been selected. You wanna go ahead and select in this space, find the volume, and then once you've got that EOS digital, we're gonna be good, bam, just like that. It's gonna show your images and you're ready to go. By default, all images that you have on the card will automatically be selected. You have the option to come down here and uncheck all images. At this point, nothing would be imported because you don't have anything selected. You can also just go ahead and check all and everything would be selected once again. You can edit that. So let's say right here, I've got these three images that I do not want. Why? Well, because they're completely black. So I can come up here and simply turn off the little check marks. And now these images will not be selected. I'm going to turn these back on. You can also do something called shift click. So what we're gonna do is select the first image, hold shift, click again. It's gonna select all three images from beginning to end. I'm gonna uncheck one check mark and it will uncheck everything. Now you can only do this for a series of images. You can't do it just this one, this one, this one. Now you can't do it that way, so we can come down here and select this and on a Mac, you're gonna hold command on a PC, you're gonna hold control and any image you select now, it's going to select that image. And then once I'm done, I can uncheck that and it's gonna untick everything that I don't want. Once I've picked the images we wanna import, we have some options. The first one is to copy and this is just what you get. And what this means is gonna copy the images from your SD card to the specified hard drive or location where you wanna save those. You can also copy as a DNG. So if you remember in the first video, I told you that DNG stands for digital negative, which was, which was made by Adobe. And if you wanna convert all your raw files over to the DNG raw format, that's where you can do it, which is right here. You can also move and add. If I already had my images on a hard drive, but I wanted to add them to the Lightroom catalog, I could select add. Now it's not letting me do that because it recognizes that this is not a hard drive. But if I did want to do that, I could add them to the catalog. I could select the folder that I want. I could hit add and then just hit import. And really quickly, we just add the images to the catalog. It's not moving them. It's just adding the information in the, in the file to the Lightroom catalog. Next thing that we have over here is the location or destination of these files. So I'm gonna move here to here. And in my case, I'm putting it on an external SSD and this is the root of the hard drive, meaning the top level. Underneath that, I have file handling. So what I want it to do with the files, I want to build a preview. So when these import, this preview that we see right here gets rendered inside of Lightroom, we have some options there. Do we want minimal? So it's gonna be really quick. Do we want to do standard or one-to-one? One-to-one is going to be your best quality. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as standard. It's something you can go ahead and try and see what you like. We can build a smart preview. We can check this and it's going to say, don't import suspected duplicates. So what's going to happen? I'm going to turn this on because I've already imported these images and you notice everything has grayed out. If you get this, when you load your card and everything's grayed out and you can't access it, you need to turn this off. That means you've already imported the images and it won't let you do it two times so you're not duplicating yourself. In this case, I did it on purpose so we could see that option. We can 
check this little tick mark and what this will do is download the images to a second location. So while it's downloading here, we can have it download to a secondary hard drive or another location. We can also have the images added to a collection. So we talked about collections in the first video a little bit. If you want to automatically add the images to a collection, you could go ahead and click this and then pick the collection that you want it to add to. We can rename the files. And in this case, we are going to rename these files. So if I click this and I hit edit, it's going to bring up the file naming editor. Now this is new. It's changed. It looks a little bit different than it used to. And what we have now is what's called variables. So these variables fill out the information that's going to be in your file name. So what we're telling it here is we want to give it a custom text and we're going to fill that custom text out over here. And then we want to add a sequence to the numbers, meaning the first one's one, the second one's two like that. And you can come in here and click this little arrow and change the sequence. So if you want zero, 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 one, or you just want one, however you want to do it. You have some other options. You can just click on these and hit insert. You can do time. You can do dimensions. You can do some custom things. Anything that you would want to add here, you would just insert it and then you would be good. So in our case, we're going to do custom text and I'm going to call this sunflowers. And you can see the way this is going to work. The first image is going to be sunflowers one and the next one's going to be two. By using this, this is what it's going to look like. We have a little extensions here. We want to save these as CR2 files. We're just going to leave that as is. We're going to apply during import. So do we want to apply anything? And this is where the ingest concept comes, meaning is that you're doing something to the images as you are moving them from one spot to another. We can do some develop settings, meaning that as we import these, we can automatically create them over to a black and white image. Now, raw files can't be overwritten. So what we're doing in this, we're, we're applying a preview of what it would look like. If you do develop settings, it's not ruining your original image. Your original image is always going to be there. It's just applying a preview. What it does is it writes that information in that XMP file. And then when you look at that file, it reads the XMP file of what you wanted done to it. And then you get a display of the black and white image. So we can always just reset that and it would always go back to normal. We're never in this series going to do develop settings. We can do a metadata template. I love metadata templates. So we'll go ahead and hit new. So metadata is used a lot for journalism and editorial content, but this is also great for search engine optimization as well. You can put all your information in these fields. And it will add this to the XMP file or add this to the file. Even if it's a JPEG, it's going to add this to the image. If somebody sees your image and wants to buy it from you, your information is going to be on there. If you're doing caption information for journalism, it's going to have that caption information and it will automatically fill out those fields if they're put in the right location when you upload to the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel for right now but we'll just use my test one that I have right here. We can automatically add some keywords and we'll get into keywording more later. But if you want to add keywords, you can do that right here. We want to change the destination. Now we selected the hard drive of where we would want to go, but I also want to give that folder a name. And so you can see right up here, I have given this a fake folder name. We'll look to see what today's date is, which is March 19th. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to change this three to 19. I almost always give a date. Now you can't use a backslash or a forward slash. It needs to be a dash or an underscore. So it's three 19, 2020. This is so helpful to have the date on your folder. And then what's in those files and any other information that you would want to add to the folder. So the folder is going to be there. And then all these images are going to go inside this folder. You want to make sure it says into one folder by default. It usually comes by date. If you were to take some images today and some the next day and some the next day and then import them, it will import each set of images into their appropriate date folder. So you have a folder and then inside that folder, you have three different dates. And then inside those folders, you'll have the images that corresponds with those dates. I don't want that. I just want all the images that are sunflowers into one folder. If you want it the other way, you choose the other selection. 
So we're good to go. Once all this information is filled out, we are pretty much set to hit import. Once again, you can adjust your thumbnails here. You can sort the way this is filtered. These, so I have it set up by capture time, but you can come in here and change anything that you want. This is for grid and this is view. You also have a little button down here on the left-hand corner. This is like a simplified import view. Click it again, it expands it out to everything. So we're good, we're gonna go ahead and hit import. Now you can see it running, the first bar is to import the images and then the second bar is it rendering the previews. So when we did that standard preview, it's rendering the preview. If you click on an image too fast, especially if you're viewing it big, you might see it kind of go out of focus and then render. So if I start going through here quick, you might be able to see it take a second where it renders and then it's clear. So there we go, we saw that little loading. So you saw the little disclaimer pop up, that was it rendering the image. All right, so what we're gonna do next is something called culling or tagging the images. Basically, nobody's gonna tone every single photo that they shot. You're gonna go through your images, and especially if you have lots of images, like five, six, seven hundred images, you're not gonna to wanna to look at every single image. You're gonna have some that are out of focus, some that aren't good, some that you love, some that you don't love. We're gonna go through and tag images. That tagging process is called culling. Now the way I do that is I usually put my right hand on my right, left and right arrows. So you can see I'm toggling with my left and right arrows. Let me move this out of the way. And my left hand is on the number one key. So as I toggle through the images, if there's an image that I like, I can hit the number one. Right here, it gave the number one. So I'll reset that, hit the number one. It's setting that rating to one. I could click on these, but I'm just gonna hit the number one because it's easier just to use my hands because I can go through really fast. Now, I usually just do the number one. If you wanna do two stars for this one, three stars for this one, five stars, it doesn't matter to me. You could do it any way that you want. To review this, one is one star, two is two stars, three is three stars, four is four stars, five is five stars. To get the colors, it's six, seven, eight, nine, and then purple, you just have to kind of tap it. If you wanna remove the color, just tap the color again. If this bar disappears, you hit the letter T, you hit the letter T again, the bar reappears. This will rotate your images, and this is for that face identification that we're not gonna use. This right here flags it, meaning you like it. This rejects the image. Reject can be helpful, especially if you have a lot of images you don't like. So what I'll do is I'll pick two or three because I'm not gonna actually use these. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reject these images. Now, when you're going through, you could just hit delete or you could just wait and hit reject at the end. The letter or the key to flag an image, I'll do another one, is the letter X. That's to reject or flag the image. Once I've rejected all my images, now once I've selected my image, I'm gonna go back to grid view here, and I'm gonna actually select this attribute. So what the attribute is letting me do, it's letting me come up here and filter by an attribute. So basically I can say, hey, I wanna see any image with one star or more. So it's letting me do images of one star or more. I can also come down here to the filter. So if I wanna see anything with three stars or more, I can select that. I can go back to one star. You can also come down here and click on filter and it will expand that. So if I wanna come in here and see rejected images, so I've got this first one, second one. So any flagged images I can see, rejected images I can see. In this case, I wanna bring up just my rejected photos. So these are my rejected photos. We can see that they're grayed out. I can come up here, select this little box. It's gonna show me just the rejected images. I'm gonna hit Command A to select all or Control A on a PC, and then I can hit Delete. And what I can say is either just delete those from a disk or remove, I'll delete from the disk. And just like that, all the photos are gone. Now I don't see my images. All I need to do is turn this filter back off and I can see images again. Once again, I can select filters by star, color, any way that I want. And this process is called culling or tagging. Well, hopefully this has been helpful. You'll learn a little bit of how to import and call inside of Lightroom. 
If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.